is a one of those swivel desk chairs, but I made it look a little bit like fancier, like for like a law office or just you know a nicer place of business. Um, a lot of this was also um, just considering uh, what uh, people in offices would like to see. Um, that's not really traditional. The racing stripe from the top and down collapsible armrests and what you do is just push down and then it collapses into this um, space inside and it can fold down again. Um, yeah, this is also can also recline as indicated and kind of kicks out. It's a really fun project to do. I really liked it. Uh, basically for when you're yeah, outdoors with other people and you might be hiking or just in in the woods maybe at night this clip here in the corner if if you'd like to take a look at that and basically that's just so you hopefully don't lose it you can just clip it right onto your pants or something and just trying to think of the user yep and what i can include to help make their lives a little bit easier it shocks someone just enough to wake them up without like hurting anyone. So like the prank hand shock thing, it doesn't actually like shock you. It just vibrates really, really fast, which is my intent. So it's like, it's something like, oh, that's, that's crazy. Like to feel in the morning, like, ah, oh, that just got me up. But it's not something that's gonna be like, I'm in pain, but I'm awake, so. I am involved in the Wushu Club at, here at U of I, so. My friend said that he would like better grip on the bottom of the shoes and also to make the laces somewhat, somehow tighter. What I did was just eradicate the laces and replace them with Velcro straps. So hopefully that sticks huh, uh, to, to secure the shoe on, on the foot of the wushu e, the performer. And for the grip on the bottom of the shoes, I just added a different design did some research and had a buddy of mine who's really into shoes tell me that this kind of W pattern is the best, uh, the best grip for your buck, really, when it comes to space and things of that nature. A sandwich mesh pattern on it. It's very light. You could change it uh, to match your team colors. Uh, one key feature of this um, design is the fact of fastening system where it's just one um, location behind the ankle where you pull and the rest it activates these straps and then it allows the, um, the shoe to um, wrap around your foot um, which is very appropriate for uh, sports such as badminton or volleyball which requires um, you to be very fast on your feet and very stable on your feet at the same time. Yeah, you're asked for a definition of industrial design. That's what's so difficult about it because there are 100 right answers probably as to what the field encompasses. So there are a lot of things you can design in the field, uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, all the way from product design to medical equipment design to um, uh, uh, some of our graduates have actually gone into interface design occasionally um, and uh, packaging design. Um, so the diversity of the way you can use your skills is what I like about the field. Every project's different um, depending on the brief. You know, you might have to do a different set of things, but generally speaking, the first step is to really like define your problem. brainstorming with like word maps, things like that. It's like, okay, what products exist right now that solve this problem? Or what products are these users using that are similar? Don't just get stuck on that first idea. Move through several different ideas um, and sketch, sketch, sketch. That's the key. From those concepts, you know, just further refining them, going into form studies with Again, more sketching and more sketching, and then like probably a little bit more sketching. So there's like 
a good volume of different ideas, then you can start to go back to the user with some of your concepts that you like, start to refine your concepts. I try to look up um, as many materials as possible, um, see what, what's out there um, and what they might be used for. Once I pretty much understand what my design is, I'll start to go to SolidWorks, um, which is a CAD program, uh, and start to 3D model this on the computer. Say, like, based on the engineering drawings of the CAD model from SolidWorks, I might take this information and these measurements and stuff that I've determined, and then I might go to the physical model, you know, and start to build this and see if uh, this concept works in physical space. So you can say, well, we want to design a pen. We have this as current solution. So you get to say, how many different ways can that be resolved? So you go through research, concept development, finalization, and say, well, it should look like this. You got to keep in mind, like, this is something like a person might want to buy one day. So if I'm drawing a product or something, I, I look for like the functionality of the product and what looks good and, and all that stuff, so that's what I look for. That's going to be one of the most exciting things is seeing something that I've designed on the shelf, you know, that people are using and people have in their homes like that, to me, would be uh, one of the best things, you know, it's like my baby, it would be in people's homes and I'm just like, yeah, I designed that. I can affect the world, I can, I can enact some kind of change eventually, is uh, really, really heartening. I mean, given the opportunity, most people uh, um, really enjoy uh, simply making things and creating things. It seems to be in our DNA as a species, and uh, so I think it's um, uh, uh, a very satisfying part of what we do. Part of it relaxation, part of it uh, we can earn a living at it and part of it we can use to help uh, the human condition and improve the lot of those that are less fortunate. So I think it's a wonderful thing. So. I feel like design is, will always um, say more than we could ever like just say it to somebody, you know. Good design speaks for itself, I think. When we do our job well, uh, we're not, um, uh, people don't always know about it. Design is important because it's like everybody has their own style and like shows everyone's personality. I am seeing a world of just of bleakness. Oh, it'd be pretty boring. I can't even really imagine it. Like there would always, there'd always have to be some type of design. I think this harkens back to the days of the caveman. You know, seriously. I mean, you know, they they had rocks to suffer. You know, that had to be damn uncomfortable. You know, oh, everything made would be very tasteless, very um, just not interesting. So, as I said before, it's well. well we would basically be living in huts. Things would be very scientific, I think. Um, and art and design tends to be more emotional. You know, it's making an emotional connection with things. I've seen solutions that are done strictly by engineers. They work perfectly, but they look crappy. Uh, and if that industrial designer was not around, you'd have a bunch of things that were perfect solutions on the inside but the outside was never really thought of. So you know, it would be stuff that was halfway solved. Mm -hmm.